So now the next circuit fragment we're going to look at is the voltage divider. So you use resistors to divide up voltage. We'll look in that in more detail coming up. In earlier videos we had semiconductors, they blocked a certain voltage and that same voltage built up across them. Resistors aren't as straightforward. But in any case, we have this circuit that we're going to build first. So again, a simple circuit, easy uh, values. And the power supply set to 10 volts slightly more because there's a little resistance at all these points. It takes away a little bit of the voltage. So I want to keep it above 10 volts, slightly above, and at 10.10 .10 volts will do. So no voltage is being output right now. And I have current limited to 30 milliamps right there. We will hit the uh, power button. Now the output is on. And so what we're going to do is we have the power supply, which I used a battery symbol there. You can substitute it. The rest of this only cares that you have the voltage across it that you see here and also that it can provide enough current to hold that voltage. So we're going to take one resistor here, a one kilo ohm resistor, put it to the positive rail right there and again you don't have to build it exactly as you see it in schematic the power supply does not have to be from the left side moving right you can go right moving left as long as you make the proper connections and uh, so now we're gonna put another resistor this time to the negative rail again this is a one kilo ohm resistor so at this point half of the resistance goes to the positive rail half of it goes to the negative rail so we expect half of that voltage at uh, the output. So the output actually goes to other circuitry when you see a, a voltage divider. But uh, I'm breaking this up into fragments. So in future videos we're going to see voltage dividers as part of circuits. I'm not going to talk about the voltage divider much, just how it is affecting the other circuitry that we're using. So there you can see we got 5 volts at that point there and you can feed that to something else at the rail we have just a spec more than 10 volts as I said but there you can see we lost probably about uh, 40 millivolts which isn't much from uh, the power supply so any case we have that there we don't have to use one kilo ohm resistors we can swap out other value resistors the thing is that they are equal value resistors across the power supply so at the output as long as the load doesn't take any current which the multimeter really doesn't so if it takes a lot of current it's going to throw the voltage off but especially if the load takes no current it will hold about five volts right there now what we can do is that uh, usually I use five volts for my videos and so again we have five volts at the rail now so we will get half of that at the uh, output. So 2.5 volts at the output. So let's just do that measurement really quick. 5 volts at the rail. 2.5 volts at the output. They're both a spec higher, but that's okay. So now we have a lot of options for making a voltage divider. Here we're going to take three equal value resistors. So again, we have these one kilo ohm resistors. I'm going to make sure that's in the same spot as uh, the other one. And we're going to put that there. So you can see they're connected right there. And then I'll grab another one kilo ohm resistor. Make sure it's one kilo ohm. And uh, the one next to it is a 2200 ohm resistor. So that one's going to uh, connect to that resistor over there. So again, we are from positive rail towards negative rail. I still have 5 volts on the power supply and because uh, we'll just keep uh, moving along kind of picking up where we left off so in relationship to ground there up here we have two-thirds of the power supply voltage down here we have one-third of the power supply voltage so those two points there and uh, yeah before we do anything else I will put the voltage up to 9 volts because 2 thirds and uh, 1 thirds breaks up really nicely when the number is a multiple of 3 such as 9. So we got 9 volts now at the rail 
and so we will have six volts up here and then three volts right there so what it is is you can see that at this point here you still have twice the resistance on the negative side so you're closer to the positive side it'll be a bit higher down here there's more resistance on the positive side a lot of times you'll see VCC to indicate the positive side of the power supply so I just have a mix of ways to indicate that there for uh, people newer to electronics that might get confused that's what that means it's to the positive supply hopefully there's a number there otherwise you got to uh, figure things out in any case one third supply because there's one third of the resistance towards the negative rail whatever load you attach here is going to see the uh, more negative rail easier than the more positive so it's going to be a lower voltage so we'll get three volts here again it doesn't have to be exact pretty much uh, three volts there though and then pretty much six volts up there and so as I said before this is a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor and so it's about the same value as a couple of uh, resistors so we'll yank this and so now we have unequal value resistors we're going to put it to the negative rail but we still have that uh, two-thirds voltage now that we have because it's on the larger values on the more negative side and uh, there you can see we got six volts once I made a connection if I swap their positions so I put this one towards the more negative rail the one kilo ohm resistor and then the 2.2 kilo ohm resistor to the more positive rail now there's less resistance on the more negative side we're going to have lower than half of the resistance it's going to be about a third of the power supply voltage right there and uh, you can see it's a little more than uh, twice the resistance so we have a little less than a third of the voltage at the output right there and next we come to a variable voltage divider so this is called a trim pot it's a potentiometer it's a smaller version though this one's really nice you can plug it into a breadboard really easily uh, without damaging the breadboard its uh, pins here are about the same size as uh, the jumper pins there and uh, the components but in any case there's a resistive element so a single resistive element goes from the uh, positive side of the power supply to the negative you can put it to either one resistors don't care about polarity this is a 10,000 ohm trim pot let's see if uh, this will show up but uh, you can see one zero three on the top there so that's one zero and then there's three more zeros for ten thousand that's how you read read that so in any case we got to connect it to the positive side and the negative side of the power supply so I'm going to do that over there and so the middle pin is the wiper pin this arrow here indicates the wiper it slides across the resistive element so depending on its position there will either be more resistance towards the positive rail less the negative or vice versa so we are going to uh, plug this in just make sure the middle pin is in this uh, middle spot right there and so usually I would use another jumper or something to bring that to uh, other circuitry in fact let's turn this around and uh, doesn't matter which way just uh, however far it's pointing towards positive or negative it doesn't spin all the way around there are some that are multi-turn though so be aware of that but uh, this particular one just stops right about uh, those two points there now we're going to uh, grab the multimeter and to uh, take this measurement since I can't access that pin I could put another jumper there that might get a little confusing but what I'm gonna do I'm going to uh, take these uh, jumpers that I crimped alligator clips to and I do this a lot when it's harder to take a measurement so I'm going to the middle pin right there for the positive because the voltages we're looking at are in relationship to ground the zero volt reference point now I can just quickly clip this right to the uh, probes right there and now my hands are free we'll power up the voltage and uh, 
it's going to be somewhat close to 9 volts because we're still 9 volts at the uh, rail right there. But whatever voltage we want, if we get it halfway, it's going to be about half of the power supply voltage. So we go more negative towards the negative, it goes down. Towards the more positive, it goes up. So this one's pretty good. You can turn by hand right there. Or you could use a, a screwdriver right here. So the uh, bit that I have is usually for a smaller slot trim pot, but uh, it'll work here. So we can go all the way to zero, all the way up to nine, whatever we want. We can change the uh, power supply voltage. And uh, and then get whatever fraction we want really simply right here so when we go towards the more positive now we got less resistance towards positive more resistance towards negative that's why it's higher we go here now we have less resistance towards negative and uh, this is uh, magnetic more resistance towards positive so we're changing both resistances in relationship to the wire as they go to the uh, power supply voltages and now the last component we're going to look at when it comes to a uh, resistant voltage divider is the light dependent resistor. So its resistance depends on how much light is falling on its uh, face right there. And so if it's bright enough it gets to almost zero volts and if it's dark enough it gets into the tens of millions of ohms. And so we have a varying resistor with a fixed resistor. So when it's bright in uh, this setup then I'm going to use on as being basically the positive side of the power supply that usually uh, is what turns something on and then uh, when it's dark I'm going to call that off so you'll have ground there ground on the other side of the load it will be off whereas in this setup when it is dark then it will be on because that will be the lower resistance and when it's bright the load will be off because we'll have ground on both sides of the load. But uh, for now, we're just going to take uh, multimeter measurements really quickly here. And uh, so I still have the alligator clips on here on the uh, probes. I'm going to put the red one there and the black one to the negative rail right there. And there you can see it's not terribly bright. And so we don't have the full voltage. Let's uh, get this flashlight on here. And there you can see, we have almost 9 volts. So, that's a uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor right there. A brighter light would get it a little brighter. But that is out of 9 volts right there. So, it's uh, pretty close. Now, what we will do is uh, try to darken this up quite a bit. Turn that off. And I have this covered uh, an alligator clip right there. And so I can just slide that right over the light dependent resistor. Hopefully that gets dark enough. There you can see it's practically zero volts right there. Dark enough. So we got high enough resistance. Now we're going to swap this. Put the uh, light dependent resistor to the more negative side of the power supply. Our fixed resistor again a one kilo ohm but you can vary it. It will change its sensitivity a bit. But at the extremes the light dependent resistor will really take over at the extreme. So now we get it really really dark the voltage gets up to the uh, power supply voltage right there really well and if we get it uh, bright enough so I'll turn on that light plus I will add the uh, flashlight now the uh, voltage dropped right there because we're getting a fairly low resistance from the negative side right there. Brighter light would do better but uh, in any case that is a very easy way to make a light sensor. So there's a lot of resistive components whose resistance changes based on uh, some outside force, maybe pressure or whatnot. But these are pretty common and uh, so we'll use that plus. You can see the light affecting it really easily. So now to wrap this up, this video has gone uh, quite long but uh, hopefully you still enjoyed it. We're going to look at uh, this basic formula for a uh, voltage divider and so you just use the numbers there this is resistor 2 as you can see there the one going to the negative supply resistor 1 to the positive so this number could change uh, right here but in any case you put that resistor 2 there resistor 1 and resistor there to add them together and then divide them so when we had the 1 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm 
at the beginning you take uh, one kilo ohm divide it by two because it was one plus one it was two you had one half pretty straightforward and uh, and then you multiply that by the voltage in one half of the voltage in will be the voltage out so I put the light dependent resistor back over here because as I said if you get enough light on here its resistance will get to about zero volts right there and so uh, in uh, the setup we here have here if that's going to something else and that something else also has low resistance then you'll get a lot of current going through the light dependent resistor and maybe as far as the other components are concerned a lot of current going through them they could easily overheat and stuff so you got to make sure that you use low enough value resistors that the load doesn't change the uh, voltage because it's going to let current go through there it's going to pull the voltage down when you're headed to the negative rail and uh, so you want to use low enough value resistors for a particular load usually you give it to something that amplifies the current it looks at the voltage and sets the voltage somewhere else you don't really depend on the current here but you could power something directly and so you don't want too high of a value of resistors for the load but then again if they're too low and uh, the voltage is high enough that might be too much current so you have to balance that out but uh, in any case this is just an introduction to voltage dividers in general and uh, so I'm not going to get into that uh, too much but uh, thanks for watching I will see you in the next video